Good morning everybody and welcome to the Gallant Views Daily News Show for Tuesday the 28th of February 2023. My name's Colin and I'll be bringing all the news updates for this morning. Um, very scary, tomorrow is the 1st of March, um, it's certainly certainly flying by. Um, obviously the majority of the, the news um, is still really the, the aftermath of the Rangers uh, League Cup final defeat on Sunday. Um, all still very sore. Um, I'm sure we all agree. Um, starting with the the news before going to some of the ex-players comments. Um, an interesting one. Uh, a few papers ran with this. Uh, I don't know how much is in it, but uh, best-selling author and sports consultant Alistair McCaw, um, was at Orkin Heavy um, yesterday afternoon and. He's posted a few photos with Michael Beale. Um, so it's it's really hard to say like how many times do we see like celebrities and ex players like go around different clubs just to see their, their training facilities. But he was at the game in Hamden um on Sunday and then he's visited Dork and Howie with Michael Beale. So I I certainly hope that Michael Beale's picked his brain um, in terms of um in terms of McCaw's um, specialty. He's written several books on winning team performance and um, he's known for consulting Olympic gold medalist and Grand Slam champion. So I'd like to think that Michael Beale has uh, picked his brain on a few things, um, although it, it could very well just be the guys on his jollies. Um, but I thought it was worth mentioning a few papers going with it. Um, a few players um had their, uh, ex players I should say had a piece to say um on the game starting with Andy Halliday, um when speaking about fashion Sakala and the comments that he made before the game, he said I've never been a fan of comments like that because it can always lead to biting you in the backside. At the time, I thought it was a tight angle and perhaps took a bobble off the pitch. This is talking about the. Um, the chance that he missed but watching the back there's no way he should not score that goal on the team selection Hardy's went in um, in a bit more detail and he said the big shock for me was when the team lineup came out there was a lot of doubt over whether Malik Tillman was fit and I thought it was a bonus but to see no Rastion was a real shock for me I get it he hasn't played a lot of football for a number of months but in the two games he has played he's looked very good he's got man in the match in both if we are talking about players who aren't really fit here, hand in, heading into a game, Malik, T- Malik Tillman hadn't trained in two weeks and John Lundstrom hadn't for a month. And they still got the nod. So I think the omission of Rashton was a real shock for me. But then to not bring him on at half-time was an even bigger surprise. I thought that change would be made. Alfredo Morelos coming off the pitch was a real surprise. I would have kept it the way it was in that game. Rangers had to come on to it and I don't think he said the world out. I like with his performance, but he fed off scraps. What he had to do, he did okay. And he was just off the back of a goal where Rangers are gathering momentum. Morelos Mer- Mer- would have stayed on the pitch for me. So, um, nothing really too much. I don't think many of us would disagree with, with Andy Halliday. Um, particularly, well, on both points, um, begin with Sakala, first of all. Yeah, that's... It's just silly. We we said um, on the pod a few times that someday in the media team has to grab his players with a scruff of the neck and tell them don't don't give yourself open jo- goals like that. Um, and on the team selection, <clears throat> I think it's been done to death that Rasson didn't start and he didn't come on at half time. So Andy how they really echo the the thoughts and sentiments of a lot of us here. Um, on a slightly different point, Kenny Miller um, was speaking to Sky Sports News and asked about how much of a rebuild Rangers needed. And interestingly enough, he said that I think rebuild is way too strong. Rangers are a good squad. They've got a lot of strength and depth. Michael Beale will always like to put his own stamp on it. He's already started that with two additions in January. I would imagine another three or four will come in in the summer and there will be people who will move out as well. He's already said that the squad, the squad needs to be There are too many players there, which even in a day-to-day situation becomes maybe unmanageable for training. He'll definitely not have, he'll definitely ha- not have a rebuild, but there will be a refresh of the squad in the summer. So, so that is interesting, and I think um, 
I, I mentioned this on Sunday's pod, and uh, I think some of the, <laughs> the listeners watching live um, maybe disagreed with me, but of the players who started on Sunday, I don't think we're going to see every one of them out the door, and I don't think we should either. When I talk about the rebuild, it's over the next two or three windows, but we can do it in one window. Um, uh, the the likes of your senior players who aren't performing time and time again, uh, like James Tavernier, John Lundstrom, um, Ryan Kent, I, I find they'll be there next season. I want them there. But my issue is that they're nailed on start with no competition. We should be adding players in better than them so that, at the very least, these players need to raise their game. Um, that's been a problem when we, we, we've we not brought in a right back. Um, it's been young boys challenging James Tavernier um, and Adam Devine. I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but he's at the very early stage of his career. When we look at um, the, the attacking options, we brought in a challenge Ryan Kent. It's Fashion Sagala, who's you know inconsistent at best, and Rabi Matondo. I don't really need to say much more about that. Um, so so Ryan Kent is still a talented player, but he does need competition, and we, we need to start getting these players moving into the bench and better players in ahead of them if they're going to continue to perform like that. So I, I, I probably agree with my there that a refresh more than a, a rebuild um, to begin with, but over the next two or three windows, it does have to be a rebuild. Um, and... For a starter, three, at least four players coming in straight into the first team. We need to start adding value and quality right into the first team. Um, I'm not going to read any Barry Ferguson's uh, comments. Um, it's just annoyed me when I read them. Um, uh, well, he was on the on Go Radio yesterday saying that, um, that the goalkeeping position isn't a priority, but he... <laughs> Uh, the Rangers should be focusing their funds elsewhere, but he has said that give McGregor another year, and uh, I just kind of turned off on that. I get the sentiment where there is probably more important positions, but I think goalkeeping is a very important position for the summer. I think we need two keepers at least. I don't think McGregor and McLaughlin are the long term answers. Um, I completely disagree with him there. Um, on the rest of the season, Kenny Miller. Um, he spoke about what Rangers should be focusing on and he said the league was already done so all focus has to go on getting right back on it and build towards the Scottish Cup at the end of the season because I think that becomes paramount now. Cup finals are super important to both teams. It's a chance to win a trophy and I just had a feeling maybe Rangers would have wanted it that little bit more. Going into the last third of the season, I don't think Rangers fans are going to accept not winning trophies anymore. This Scottish Cup becomes so, so important. The Rangers get to the final and they retain the trophy at the start of June. And yeah, absolutely, um, totally agree with Miller there that everything has to go into the Scottish Cup. Um, it really does. Um, I don't. It's all fine and well saying that we need to build for next season and we do, but in the meantime, I want Sylvie, I want shiny silver things um, waved at me um, from Hamden. So a couple of um, slight news headlines. Uh, the Football Insider running again with a short right exit story. Um, I spoke last week or maybe the week before that several English Championship clubs are apparently um, sounding Rangers out and Rangers have said that they're willing to listen. So um, it's almost the same story they're running, but I just thought it was interesting it's popped back up again. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he does move on in the summer. Um, so I think... I uh, yeah, I think they're probably onto something there, whether or not they're predicting it or they're just um is one of the ones that broken clock is right twice a day. Um Give Me Sport, um a news website, um are running that Rangers are interested and very, very pushing for them to go for Jack Butland. Um so I don't really know if Jack Butland's agents maybe got um, one of the journals here to um muster up interest. Um I think Jack Butland's a, a better option than that boy Gunn for, for Norwich. I think Butland, he's played for England before. Um, he's had a decent enough career. Um, I don't really know how I feel about out of favour goalkeepers um, coming in to be their number one. Um, but again, if we need two, two goalkeepers, then he might be an option. 
Um, but that's um, that's been an interesting. They've been running them um, for a wee while. The Rangers are interested, but now they're really their journals are really pushing, saying so need the best possible choice and stuff. So I think there might be um, ulterior mo- motives to that. Um, but we'll wait and see. I suppose it is very very early days. Um, it's only the first of March tomorrow, so. It might be a um, two or three months until we actually do get anything concrete for um, this answer window. But what I would say is Rangers need to start doing their business now. Yes, we can't get anybody over the line, we can't move anybody on, but the 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 size of the job needing done over the next 18 months, it has to start now. Um, and if Lewis Wilson isn't already sounding players out, um, sounding clubs out to take, uh, take your, a kind of deadwood, then we're going to have big, big problems. So that's all for me in terms of the Rangers news today, but just um, some big news for the podcast. Um, so obviously we've been try- trying out the new show and um, some additional content over the last uh, month or so just to see how it lands. But as of Monday, the 6th of February, we're going to launch your membership service where for just £1 a month, you'll be able to access all this additional content uh, going forward um, the two weekly shows on the Thursday and the Sunday when we record at half eight they'll still be free for all um, all, all to watch or listen that'll be made public as well the Premier League show Premier League show will still be um, free for non-members uh, but the daily news show um, will be for members only and first access to interviews additional content will all be on for members so for 25 pence a week, you're going to get five daily shows and one additional show on top of that for 25 pence a week. Um, I think it's value for money, personally. Um, the first month, we will have interviews with Morris Ross and Graham Roberts, um, both or formerly of the Rangers Parish. Um, both great interviews, but I think um, you'll really like the Graham Roberts one um, in particular. So they're both going to drop within the first month. If you could support the podcast uh, with us um, a pound a month, it'd be a massive help going towards, obviously, like, it, it helps cover the cost of the platforms we use for streaming, stuff like that, and ultimately, we want to get more players on the pod, and we, we do want to get more content coming out, obviously, <laughs> players don't always come cheap to come on these, these podcasts, so anything you can do to support and build the, the pod, I really appreciate it on behalf of all the boys. If not, you know, we will still have the the three shows um, every week, um, the Premier League and the two things, chat, all things Rangers, they will still be there for you. If you do want to become a member, um, if you're listening um, on any of the audio platforms, on the show description there will either be a link for become a member at Acast or um, a link to take you to the Anchor website, so... But we're no directing to one particular podcast. We want to make it easy for you. And wherever you listen right now, you can become a member there. So um, if you click on the ACAS link, um, it'll let you become a member and um, it'll direct uh, any member-only content to whatever platform you pick. Um, I think the most common one is the Apple Podcast. For Anchor, um, if you click that link, it may be um, record a message. And down the bottom of that page, there's become a member. And it's the same idea. Um, you can pick what platform the additional content will go to. And I think the biggest one on there is Spotify. For YouTube, uh, the members channel will be up and running by the end of this week. So when that comes up, you can just join and subscribe there. And again, hopefully see you See you all there on Monday. Um, I'll be here with the rest of the news content um, every day this week. Um, and then the membership will go live from Monday. Well, that's all for me, folks. I hope you have a, a terrific Tuesday and I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Take care.